Hi, my name is Andrew, and by the end of this video, you're going to know how to build this lamp. Stick around and see how I hide the wire, reinforce the joinery, and make an overall beautiful lamp. Let's get started. I really didn't start out with any plans, so I decided to mill up this cherry and walnut because I knew they'd be really good contrasting colors. You can use any type of wood for this. This is just what I decided to do. Now, I didn't have enough cherry that was thick enough for the base, so I decided to laminate these two pieces together to give me a nice, solid piece of wood. Clamp it together, set it to the side to dry, while we work on the actual frame for the lamp itself. This lamp frame is pretty simple. I decided to rip the walnut down to approximately two inches thick. Once I had all of my pieces ripped down, I moved over to my miter saw to cut everything down to final width. The sides of the lamp are going to be approximately 57 to 58 inches. Doesn't need to be exact as long as they are the exact same length. I decided to call these next pieces the stretchers. They're approximately five inches wide. It's what's gonna make the rectangular shape attaching the legs to each other. But you're gonna need three of these for the posts to actually mount the lamp hardware. So cut two for the legs, cut one for the post. After I have all my pieces cut, I decided to cut the grooves and channels for my wire to run through. First, I start with taking a quarter inch spiral upcut bit, routing a groove all the way down the center of one leg, making sure I protrude all the way out on the bottom side, but stop just short of the top side so it remains hidden. Now to run the cable through the top stretcher, I cut a 3 8 inch hole from the center of the end grain halfway through the block. I flip it to its side, cut in the center, and run halfway through, creating an L-shaped channel for the wire to run through. After I had all my channels cut, I needed to get started on filling the groove after laying the wire. I took a scrap piece of the 2 inch material I had, cut just over a quarter inch out of it on the bandsaw, and then I took it to the planer and mill it down to a quarter inch, constantly checking for fit on the groove I cut inside of the leg. After I got it to the right fit, I cut a thin strip off of my thin strip. I taped the wire in place, leaving myself a lot of extra room to run through the post and actually wire in the material. After the wire was laid into the groove, I applied glue to my thin strip, make sure to spread it around real nice and even, place the thin strip inside of the groove, and then I hammered into place. I flush cut the bottom with the flush cut saw, and then this is an optional step. I cut just enough material off on the band saw so I didn't take a lot of time block planing everything down. After that was pretty much flush, I decided to sand everything to be nice and even, making sure it wasn't gonna be messing up with the joinery, and now I have a nice hidden wire. Now for the glue up, I'm going to be using butt joints, but before you scoff at me, I found two ways to completely reinforce this. This lamp is not going to be holding up a lot of weight, and there's actually going to be a third reinforcement on the bottom portion. I added some water to a paper plate, put some glue in it, then I soaked it into the end grain of each of my stretchers, allowed that to dry so all those little pores would fill up. After it was dry, I applied a decent amount of glue to both of my legs, clamped it into place, making sure everything stayed as flush as possible. Now for the second reinforcement. I wanted to use a contrasting wood to give this a little bit of character, so I took some scrap cherry I had from the same piece of wood I used for the base, and I cut half inch plugs out of it. And I cut the rest out on the bandsaw, and I used a half inch forstner bit to cut halfway down into the wood. What these plugs do is allow enough face grain and end grain to actually glue together so it's not just end grain to edge grain. If you wanted to hide it a little bit better, you could use matching walnut plugs or whatever wood you're working with. It's also a good chance to practice your bow ties because bow ties would be extremely strong and pretty. I used the same glue up method for the post, but I only put a plug on the back side. After that was all glued up, I set it aside and decided to work on the base. I gave it a nice edge on my joiner. This is optional because you can run it all through the table saw if you did a nice glue up. I switched out my combination blade to a Freud thick stock rip blade. It's a little bit wider and it has 18 teeth and it cut through this really thick cherry like it was nothing. And I got zero burn marks on the cherry, which is crazy. After I cut the base to size, I grabbed my trim router and straight edge to mortise out most of the channel needed to fit the frame into the base. This mortise will add a lot of strength to that butt joint and also help keep things square. After hogging out most of the material with my trim router, I sharpened my widest chisel to pair everything back to the lines I marked for the base. I grabbed a portion of bit just smaller than the mortise itself so I can create a hole for the rest of the wire to run through from the bottom of the frame. I needed the hole to be a little bit bigger, so I grabbed a chisel and squared it out. First test fit, 
came out nice and it holds up perfect without any glue or clamps. This is a perfect time to sand everything up to 120 before we start adding our finishing touches. I got a half inch round over bit so I can round over the top of the base and the rest of the frame. I got two equal sized blocks that I use blue tape and CA glue to attach to the frame. This will allow me to come to a positive and equal stop on all four sides. This allows a pretty little bevel on the bottom and it doesn't round over that square mortise I took a lot of time to make a tight fit. After I knew everything fit well, I ran the cord through, applied my glue to the mortise and placed the frame into the base. I used a C clamp to hold everything in place while I came in with a countersink fit, then applied two two and a half inch screws through the base into the frame. This just reinsures that everything will be strong. The final part of this build will be adding rubber feet. You could skip this part if you decide to run a groove for the cable to come out the bottom. I wanted this to be slightly elevated because I didn't want any holes protruding out of the bottom of the base. I used Rubio Monaco for the finish because that's what most of the furniture I've built from my home used. After everything was dried up and finished, I had a 3 8 inch thread all this comes at the, the lamp department, lighting department at your big box store. In fact, all of the lamp hardware I got was from the big blue box store. Lamp wires are super easy. Just make sure when you're doing this next part, the lamp is not plugged into any source. There are all different types of sockets out there and the most important thing to note here is what your hot wire and your neutral wire are. Your neutral wire is generally identified as having a rib on the side. When you feel the wires, one side has a really prominent rib, the other side is nice and smooth. The smooth side is going to be your hot wire. On the socket itself, your hot channel is closest, for the most part, to the actual switch, whether it's a pull chain or a twist knob or whatever it may be. All you have to do is unscrew both of the screws at the socket, make a little J-hook on the end of your wire, and screw that down where the screw actually holds the wire in place. The rest of the socket assembly is pretty straightforward. You screw everything into place. Now you can plug it in, throw your bulb in, and then check to see if it works. My final step was obviously apply a lampshade and a top cover, and you're done. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. I got some more videos queued up here. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more because I got a lot more things to build and a lot more tips and tricks to throw out there.